everybody. Uh, back today with another Apple tutorial. Today we are going to be doing more uh, iOS programming, intro to Xcode. And today we're going to be covering adding sounds to your app. And we're going to do this using Audio Toolbox. So we are basically going to base this off of system sounds. And I'll get more into this later. So why would you add sound to your app? Well, it adds dimension and feel to any application. I'm sure if you are used to using apps, you have used apps, and a good number of the most popular ones, if not all of them, have sound. So it allows for feedback, and it's kind of just fun. It's kind of a fun thing to do. It makes your app really come to life. And so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use audiotoolbox.framework. And it's a powerful sound framework. It allows for a playback of sounds along with sound processing. So by sound processing, I mean uh, recording sounds, saving sounds, but today we're only going to be using playback of system sounds. And I encourage you to check out Apple's documentation because there's really a lot of things you can do with this once you get the basic grasp of what we're going to do today. So how are we going to do it? Well, I'll show you. Let's do it. All right. So the first thing we're going to be doing is opening up Xcode, and I'm going to be creating a new project, but if you have a project already incorporated into your uh, incorporated into your whatever, if you already had a project open, then just use that. So I'm going to be keeping this really simple. I'll do a single view application, name it sound test, and I'm going to use automatic reference counting. I'm going to make it only iPhone because I don't really care. Don't want unit tests, and don't need to get repository. And if at any point you're feeling lost during this, I encourage you to check out my very first introduction to Xcode. We go through Xcode and you'll find it really helpful if you don't know at any point what I'm doing. So, actually, side note, I have to stop saying so. So, so yeah, I'm going to try to avoid saying that. Now, first thing we're going to do is add the system sounds framework into the frameworks. So, that's called the audio toolbox. So, to do that, we're going to go to build phases link binary with libraries, add, search audio, and there it is. There's also a bunch. There's core audio, audio unit, audio toolbox. We're just going to be using audio toolbox today. Now that that's in there, I'm going to drag it into my frameworks folder because I'm really serious about, I don't know, kind of OCD. None of this stuff really matters. Let's move on. First thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to need some sounds to play. And so I have a couple of sounds. I have some sounds of clapping, and I have some sounds of, I think, cheering. I don't know. I just picked random ones. But moreover, the format of the sound is actually really important. So I'm going to add, using Command-Shift-I, or, or not. Oh, no, that's Final Cut. <laughs> I used the wrong uh, command. Anyways. Add files to sound test. And I'm going to want to copy. And they're actually on the desktop. Not, and I just have sounds. And I have these two sounds cheers.wave and claps.mp3. So import those. And I will include these in a zip folder so you can try them out. From here, we have our two sound files. So I think they'll play. Yay! So, pretty simple. And we are going to build a really simple interface that allows us to use these. So I'm going to set this up so that when you click a button, the sound plays. And we'll just have two of them. So, I'm going to do... Here I'm in Interface Builder, if you don't know what that is. And I'm going to use two buttons. Don't really care where they are because it's more of the code. And I'm going to call this one clap and this one cheer. And now I'm going to link them and create some actions. So you might be wondering if you use an IB outlet or an IB action. It's actually an IB action, but really the code that I'm going to show you to implement a sound works with anything. You can have it when another function is triggered, I guess it's a method in Objective-C, pardon me. Uh, 
you know, all kinds of things. So really, it's really versatile code. And whenever the block is executed, it'll do it the same. So it doesn't have to be in action. I just have it set up like this. So I'm going to do two control drags, make sure they're actions. And I'm going to name this one play clap. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. And name this one play cheer. There we are. We have our two IV actions. And before I actually write any code, I'm going to go into the view controller.h and make sure that I have imported where are you? Audio toolbox and audio toolbox.h. That's very important. Otherwise, Xcode will not recognize what code you are giving it. And so you really need to be able to do that. I'm going to delete all this useless code because I'm really just focusing on the methods here. And so for the first one, there is some code we need to add. So this is the play clap. First line of code is system sound ID sound ID and you're just synthesizing a variable here and a string oh come on Xcode's trolling me And a string, we're going to call it sound file. And these names are actually pretty arbitrary. It could really be anything you wanted to call it. Sound file, ns bundle, main bundle. And don't ask me why the code is like this. It's really arbitrary how you actually play a sound. And I'm sure you know that if you've tried it out. Next step is path for resource string and I'm going to name it I don't know why I just wrote tap but I'll call it claps of type and this is very important if you do not get your type right it will not play the sound and so this is actually an mp3 and I notice this capitalization is exactly the same as that capitalization Xcode is just so picky about this and that and that and then this next part I'm going to say audio service create system sound ID and you see CREF URL in file URL it's really confusing but actually you just make another parenthesis double underscore bridge and I'm going to say CF URL ref and then this expression I'm going to delete and just type this in myself so I have CF URL ref and I'm trying to go slow I could type this quicker but I'm trying to go slow just so you guys can get the swing of what's going on here NS URL file URL with path and sound file. And so what we're doing here is linking this path with this sound file that we defined here earlier. And basically you have to trick Xcode into thinking that you're visiting a URL that's really located inside your app. And we're going to do address, which is the and, sound ID, so that it knows where to, um, I guess, look for the file. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain this in layman's terms it's really a lot easier with computer sciences so now the next step oh, I said so again anyways the next step is audio services play system sound and we're going to play sound ID and like I said you could name these different things if you wanted I could call this clap sound or something. I, I just keep it sound ID because it keeps it ambiguous in general. Uh, you can do it however you want. And very last, we're going to add an NS log. This is totally optional, but I'm going to add an NS log just to show that the sound played. And that way it helps for debugging if your sound doesn't actually play. And sometimes there are files that don't like to play for some reason. 
And that's it. That's all we need to do. And really, I would encourage you to write out this code a couple of times. But then if you have projects that play sounds, just copy and paste it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy here, paste here. And the only thing that differs between these two is the name and the file type. So this one is going to be Cheers. And it's a wave with all caps. Let's save it. And if I'm not mistaken, well, <laughs> we'll see here. This should play. So turn my volume up. Make sure it's on the iPhone simulator. Run it. And I haven't tested these sound files, so we'll see if they work or not. I might be making a change to my sounds. So there's the clap. Let's see if the cheer works. There we are. So that's a really, really simple Im implementation. Obviously, this is not going to be an app where you just hit clap and hit clear, hit cheer, and you know, that's it. But it's really simple implementation of the kind of a mm, little bit skewed, maybe messed up code that you need to play a sound. Now, keep in mind this is a system sound, so it's going to play only when your iPhone is unmuted. Well, I guess iPad too. Only when your device is unmuted. This comes in handy in m a pretty large array of apps because you really users only want sound when their iPhone is unmuted. If it's muted and it's still making sound, they're probably going to be kind of mad at you. And so that's pretty good. I will go through a tutorial maybe later, depending on the interest received on how to do a media sound, which is not a system sound. You can control volume, you can pause, play. That's for longer files generally. So yeah, uh, just let me know what you think of this. Any uh, problems you're having, I'll include the sound files so that you can test it out. That's really it. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like, like it. Uh, subscribe to me and give me some suggestions for next videos. Talk to you guys later.